Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and the biggest Blitzwing fanboy of them all. Do not panic, this is just a random review. Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel for day 941 of our daily content grind and today we are covering a brand new figure that is available for pre-order if you go to Hasbro or you could, might be able to find it at Target right now. Um, so this is the brand new concept edition Sunstreaker based on his intended appearance in the Bumblebee movie. So we are doing a rare thing and talking about a studio series figure but this is outside of the usual Bayverse style design, so I get curious about these, so let's see how this one turned out. So for starters, you can kind of figure out why he didn't make it into the movie, because, well, what are you going to do with another yellow and black sports car? Now, to their credit, yeah, there are hits of black here and there. They're far more to the gunmetal side of things. You can see that with the paint apps that's across here, as well as the guns themselves done up in more of a gunmetal gray than black. Uh, even the headlights are not completely pitch black on those as well. Uh, but you can see they've tried their best to kind of separate them out from Bumblebee, not only with a few hits of blue here and there, like the inside of the wheels and... The wheels, by the way, have some really nice sculpting. It's like a turbine kind of sculpt to the wheels. It looks actually really cool. But what they've really tried to do is add in this bright orange hit here and there. You can see it across the front bumper, and you can see it on the spoiler in the back. So it's a nice little thing to kind of throw your mind off of the usual Bumblebee color pattern, because otherwise... Yeah, I, I could absolutely see someone confusing this with a Bumblebee toy. I, I can imagine a kid especially seeing this as a car and going, that's a Bumblebee. You know, if he knows it's a Transformer, he's going to think it's a Bumblebee. Uh, the form-wise and all, I do like the overall look. It's a very sleek figure. It's got some nice aerodynamic curves to it, even though I'm not sure there is air in the live-action Cybertron. The overall, like I like the look of the canopy too. Like, that's where they really shine to try to get that uh, futuristic look, is just how the canopy is shaped. And I do like it overall. It does look nice. There's a little bit of heaviness to it, but it does still look like a very sleek uh, take, on, take on a normal windshield. I like the little, uh, you know, just little, like, tech greeble things here and there, too, that make it a little bit more fun. Gives it a little bit of depth across the top and across the front of the windshield. You can see the grill is also painted. As, as well as fully sculpted in we go to the rear no real paint on the rear again i am assuming they don't have the need for turn signals on cybertron they probably don't have five o'clock traffic like we do overall it's, it's just a really really nice look i like the look of the buried wheels it's a little bit weird because it, the eye kind of makes you think that yellow is part of the wheel even though it's just a fake component uh, so that's a little bit weird, but I don't mind the look of the like sunken in wheels. What I do mind is the function of them, because if we look on the underside, you can see they are exceptionally thin and they are very smooth. So uh, combine that with the fact that they are mushroom pegged on and you have you, you do have uh, a good nominee for some of the worst working wheels in the history of Transformers. Uh, not really kidding here. These these just they don't wheel. They they don't wheel, and I'm hesitant to even demonstrate it because like bec between how thin they are and how poorly they roll, um, yeah, I'm kind of scared to move it across a glass surface. Suffice to say, you need friction when it comes to wheels, so that generally means you need width. There is no width here, uh, so that's that's a downside to it. Now, toy like this, mostly going to be something of interest to collectors, so maybe a kid's not going to care, uh, or, you know, so, but it's still, it's, it's still a downside. Still a downside. I do like that the guns, by the way, can mount where his engine typically is shown, so that gives you a little bit of Sunstreaker familiarity. If we take it off, we can get a better look at that orange detail that's around the top, where the spoiler would be, but it's not technically there. It's not technically a spoiler because it doesn't really do anything for airflow. But the overall shape is fine. I do like how it carries over some of the sculpted details. It's a little nice touch. 
Also, if you want those details and you want to see a little bit more of that orange, you can separate the weaponry and plug it into the sides here. Uh, the same little tabs that kept it pinned to the top is actually going to make for a pretty good little stopping point that aligns the cannons pretty straight on the toy. So I don't know if that's intentional design or if that's just lucky happenstance. Either way, uh, it's nice. It's, it's, a nice, it's a nice little thing to make sure that everything's nice and aligned and looks good. And, you know, considering it's, you know, guns mounted to a, to a transformer, this doesn't work out too bad. I kind of like how this goes. Okay, we talked enough. We need to transform him, which I believe starts with the spoiler. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. It's going to double hinge outward. I'm going to leave it like this for now, just so we can have a little bit of breathing room as far as what uh, goes on on this toy. See, um, I'm going to need to get this panel off. It's a little bit tricky from here. We can open up the sides. That's going to be the arms. That gives me the access I need to flip this around. This is also on a double hinge. So I'm going to move all that to the back and then flip the head up. For the canopy, we need to raise this up. Fold the sides of it inward like this. And I actually really like this part where it's just all just kind of going to uh, double hinge together like that, and then double hinge inside, and then just tuck away nice and clean like so. Head goes down to finish off that torso. Going into the vehicle from the robot mode, that's actually a really cool trick to just kind of watch that much of the top of the vehicle just kind of pop out of his chest like that. It's a really cool little design touch. Go ahead and fold these panels up like so and fold the panels down to form more solid arms. Go ahead and bend the elbows out like that. Now that we've got a little bit more clearance, I'm going to uh, I'm going to hinge the shoulders down into their proper position. Make sure the back is clipped in like so with these two tabs. Now we go to the legs to finish it off. Rotate the thighs 90 degrees. Here's another transformation bit I actually really like. So, yeah, so those are going to pop out. Getting those in uh, to vehicle mode requires a little bit of diagonal pushing, which is kind of rare. Uh, we go ahead and rotate it just a little bit and then fold it down. There's a tab that clicks into that covers up uh, the wheel and the side of the leg pretty well. Fold the foot down, which, by the way, the nice little, uh, nice little folds here, the kind of things that kind of look like sneaker treads. Just kind of clamp together very nicely. I really like that touch as well. And okay, let's go ahead and do the other front section here. Peg that in, fold that down. And that's going to be Sunstreaker in the full robot mode. If that panel will stay, thank you. It's a pretty satisfying transformation. So I'm even out of some of the Bumblebee movie ones, I'm kind of used to studio series going nuts as far as panels and tabs go, but it feels like Sunstreaker keeps that to something of a minimum. Uh, he feels very solid as you're transforming him, and he does have some fun little tricks that make me more interested in the actual transformation process. Actually really happy with how that turned out. Okay, so as we can see here, uh, Sunstreaker is showing quite a bit more of that orange here. Uh, proportionally, he works out pretty well. He's a lot buffer than a lot of, of uh, Sunstreakers I'm normally used to seeing. I think a lot of that comes down to just those enlarged shoulder pads that is not very typical of his design. And uh, if we look around, very, very clean. I really, really like when they can clean these toys up so well. Very little back kibble going on. Uh, everything just kind of works a little bit more into the actual robot, which is what I like to see. We go into the detail look now, which means we start on the head. And the head has what you need in order to identify it as Sunstreaker, which means the big yellow ears. Uh, so the head, the head face, the head, like the head and face sculpt itself, it does go into that movie aesthetic of just being very heavily detailed and very heavily greebled, but you know, that's just kind of the aesthetic we go with. The Bumblebee ones aren't as bad as, like, Bayverse ones. It's not quite as extreme, so I don't mind it too much. Uh, I still think it overall looks pretty good. And then going into some of the other details we got here. So we got that gunmetal from the top of the car is now in the forearms, which is a perfect place to give him the black forearm look he had on the original toy. 
I like the little layered effect that they have on the sculpting there as well. That fits in pretty well. A little bit of silver there to break up the pelvis and separate it out from the torso, which does look really good with a translucent blue. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to hate too much on translucence here because he doesn't use very much of it. Uh, going into the thighs, that's where you get a lot more of that deep orange color going. Just, to, you know, this is where you really separate them out from being just, you know, bumblebees look alike. Silver on the, on the, the, it's weird. It, it's weird to me that it feels like his feet have more traction than his tires. He just, he just has this sneaker look to his feet, which I don't mind. And it looks, it looks fine. It's just ironic to me. And we do finish off the legs with some more silver built in for like that internal detail that's being shown as well as more orange to trace it around. It's a really nice looking figure overall. I, I'm really happy with how he comes around and he feels pretty solid too. Uh, all that, all those parts going into just bulking out his robot mode kind of helps that. Now I will say there is some hollowing to him that some are not going to like. You know, okay, so here the entirety of the forearm is just hollow. I can imagine on a larger budget figure, all this extra panel would flip in and fill up that forearm. Uh, not, not the case on a deluxe, unfortunately, but you know the intention is there. I do, I will admit, I do like some of the tech rebel that you can see in this in this particular form. Look at the look like the gears and the panels in the back. I kind of, I kind of like that overall look. You can see some five millimeter ports as well, just in case you actually want to store your weaponry on the back. Uh, which is not a bad option. Uh, but yeah, he's looking great. He's looking great. If you look closer, you can start seeing a few other little details too. Like more, can I even get in there? Yeah, a little bit more gearing there in the shoulder, which is neat. Yeah, just overall, just really nice. So if we want to take a look at articulation, we can take a look at articulation too. Head has a little bit of up and down. It's mostly just rotation though, but you do have a little bit of motion you can work with. Shoulders are those weird shoulders I don't like. Uh, so it is a hinge that goes up and a swivel that goes forward that tries to mimic universal motion but can't quite deliver on it. So you have a good range of motion in the shoulder. It just feels awkward and there's a few positions you're not going to be able to get with it. You do have rotation in the bicep. It does kind of get blocked by the wheel hanging off the back of the bicep, but you know nothing you can really do about that. So uh, you can still get full, you know, realistic range out of it. 90 degree elbow, nothing at the wrist. Thanks to the transformation, waist joint works, uh, 360 degrees all the way around. You do have a good amount in that thigh. Uh, it gets a little bit hindered in some positions, but not very many. It's just kind of rare when it kind of clips. Uh, you can kind of see where the paint doesn't really like clipping on those particular spots, so be careful with it. We see from transformation, the thigh swivel works nice. Uh, you get a 90 degree knee bend and then for the ankles backward and forward mostly forward but it's more range to work with and then of course you get that ankle tilt as well so he does have quite a bit of range quite a bit of range of articulation to this guy really really nice to see and of course if we want to arm him up the weaponry still works good here i like a double barrel blaster it seems like he's a little bit more serious about the combat this is one of the more like Heavily armed Sunstreakers, now that I think about it. Just two two double barrel blasters going forward. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of gunfire for a Sunstreaker. And just if you want a little bit of size comparison or a little bit of aesthetic comparison, um, I do have an RC around here, which is still a very good RC that most people slept on. But you can kind of see, yeah, um, he's got some good bulk to him. He's got some good size. Uh, overall... Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this toy turned out. The articulation does get a little bit limited here and there, uh, but beyond that, I really like the transformation. It's a very satisfying one. I think the vehicle mode does a good enough job of keeping it kind of away from Bumblebee's aesthetic. And yeah, the robot mode's just satisfying. I'm really happy with how this figure turned out. There is that part of me that's a little bit jaded enough to just kind of wonder, is this really a uh, a concept that never made it to the movie that they completely designed and drew out but never actually did the CG work for? Or are they just making this up so they can pad out studio series? And if they're just making it to pad out studio series, I'm going to say, keep doing it. 
keep doing it because the what made these bumblebee movie toys so good is the fact that they weren't beholden to what a vehicle mode looks like you know as long as the robot was accurate it was accurate to the movie and they could just have fun and make the best vehicle out of those parts they could and now if you're doing with concept versions of some of those Bumblebee movie characters who never made it to screen, you can also do that with the robots as well. So it's kind of getting the closest we can get to like completely clean new takes on some of these characters. It's kind of fascinating to think about that way. You know, so if you want to convince me that 900 Transformers were designed for the Bumblebee movie, but only, you know, a dozen made it to screen, lie to me if it keeps meaning they turn out this good. So... There you go. Buy with confidence. He is a very, very nice figure. I believe if you check my pre-order, if, if you check my link to Entertainment Earth in the description below, I believe you will find him up for pre-order right now. And if you do it at Entertainment Earth, it is going to help out the channel, and I thank you very much for doing that. So, that's Sunstreaker. Brilliant toy. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you next time.